organizers for the invitation to share information about the Euroguidance Network and its resources, as well as to provide some insights into how NEAT outreach is addressed in Latvia. I hope you will find some ideas that might be useful for reflection. Next slide, please. Let me begin by introducing Euroguidance, which is a European policy network co-funded by Erasmus+, Plus, the EU program for education, training, youth, and sport. Euroguidance is focused on supporting lifelong competence development of career guidance professionals through a network of national Euroguidance centers in more than 33 countries. Next slide, please. Thank you. Euroguidance mainly works with guidance practitioners and policy makers in the education and employment sectors in European Union, European Economic Area, and EU candidate countries. Common goals of all Euroguidance uh, centers are to support competence development of guidance practitioners and raise their awareness on the value of international mobility for career and skills development as well as strategic dissemination and communication on the European dimension of lifelong guidance and on tools to support mobility in Europe. Next slide, please. Thank you. Activities of Euroguidance include peer learning and networking events and production of print and electronic publications and tools. We also collect and disseminate good practice examples to access these resources, we invite you to use the Euroguidance.eu website, subscribe to the newsletter, and follow us on social media. Next slide, please. Uh, and the two practices that I've uh, selected to share with you today are available on the uh, Euroguidance website in the Good Practice Database. I've chosen these examples as they are from two different uh, contexts and, and follow two different approaches. So there is some variety, but there of course are more examples available on the website for you to study on, at your own pace. So the first practice is from Slovakia and has been developed with the support of the European Social Fund. It is a service delivery model which can be called a one-stop shop. The mission of the space centers is to create an accessible space where every young person who finds themselves in a difficult life situation can find safety and where they can receive comprehensive development, support, and counseling services in one place. Cooperation with several experts under one roof supports inclusion and multidisciplinary cooperation in the region. Space centers work with youth based on ethical principles, where the career counselor supports young people to identify their qualities, skills, abilities, and values. The counselor supports youth in looking for learning opportunities, areas, or professions where they could use their potential to the fullest. This means that young people learn about occupations, the labor market, and the search for educational opportunities setting a job search strategy, as well as preparing for a job interview. Career counseling is carried out through individual consultations or as group activities. The methodology of career counseling techniques is based on experiential, sociodynamic, and coaching approaches. The use of individual techniques was adapted to the specific needs of various target groups of youth at risk of need status, including people with health or social disadvantages. And then we move on to the next slide. Thank you. And this next example is from an international project called A Place for Youth in Mediterranean, Resilient and Sharing Economies for Needs. And this was funded by the European Economic Area and Norway Grants Fund for Youth. The project focused on developing entrepreneurial and digital skills to promote economic activity of youth in disadvantaged areas in Greece, Italy, Spain, and Cyprus. So if the first project was uh, mainly focused on the counseling services, 
then this project integrates counseling as a part of a, a uh, entrepreneurial skills development and employability project. Uh, and the, the focus of the entrepreneurship is on the sharing economy. And this means an internet-based economic system where goods or services are shared through online shopping, mobile applications, location services, or other technology platforms in various sectors. And it's used by individuals with or without payment. And this includes the sharing of products and services such as apartments, cars, personal work, and so on without intermediaries. This means reduced service costs and usually a high level of trust between providers and consumers. And the project developed research, trainer and user handbooks, as well as two youth share digital tools, which are the youth share e-learning platform. This includes a user-friendly um, uh, this includes user-friendly online training packages on topics related to the social and sharing economy, and it offers modules related to new skills and entrepreneurship in the agri-food sector, tourism, circular economy, recycling, and others. And through the Youth Share e-learning platform, young men and women are offered the opportunity to strengthen their social and you know, emotional skills through counseling sessions. They receive 120 hours of training through in innovative educational material in resilient sectors of their local economy, and they conduct an internship in a relevant local business. And the other online tool is a platform for the social and solidarity economy, which is a social business networking platform hosting relevant businesses, professionals, and various stakeholders. And the platform enables the provision of e-mentoring professional pairing of young people with social or sharing economy enterprises, and ne networking with experts and professionals. So the experienced professionals act as mentors to young people interested in being active in the field of social and solidarity economy, focusing on business plan development, personal action plans, and other types of development. And now I will be moving on to support for youth in Latvia. And uh, I have to thank Mr. Iman Slipskis from the Latvian Ministry of Welfare for providing his slides as the basis for this part of the presentation. Next slide, please. To understand the context in which outreach measures for neat youth in Latvia are provided, we have background information on the labor market. There is a law on support for the unemployed and job seekers, which establishes the types of support measures. And we have cabinet regulations, which describe how active employment measures are organized, funded, and implemented. On to the next slide, please. Next slide, please. Thank you. In Latvia, we can say that the NEAT situation is improving fairly steadily. As could be expected, there was a jump in the NEAT population during COVID, but as of last year, the numbers have returned to pre-COVID levels. Next slide, please. The population of Latvia, particularly young people, are educated and employers are willing to hire young people, which means that youth are usually unemployed only for short periods of time. And of course, uh, long-term unemployment is low. However, young people, especially in regions, can access mainly low quality employment. It is hard for youth in rural areas to get work because of insufficient public transportation. Additionally, young people want to pursue a lifestyle that their earning opportunities cannot provide. So people choose to look for work in other countries where they can earn more and have a lifestyle that they prefer. Next slide, please. Uh, here you can see how the public employment service 
the spends their annual budget on support measures or needs. Uh, and vocational, or rather we tend to call it career guidance, is the top priority. And the other uh, major type of support that the Public Employment Service funds is the support to summer jobs for young people. There are also training measures and uh, subsidized employment and other in-work measures, support measures uh, for various uh, life situations, such as uh, mobility in this case means support to being able to travel to work. Uh, people can have psychological support uh, if they have issues with physical uh, impairments, they have ergotherapists and other types of support. And there is the, the smallest uh, amount of budget is devoted to business startup measures, which is an option for young people. Next slide, please. And here you can see how the public employment service support measures uh, have res resulted. Uh, we have a fairly low unemployment rate uh, for youth, uh, lower than the EU average, and uh, also our need rate is lower than the EU average. Uh, we have uh, a about a quarter of the NEAT youth are registered with the Public Employment Service. This is uh, a significant number because uh, in order to receive unemployment benefits, you need to have had social tax paid for you. So uh, if you haven't been in education, or rather if you haven't ever been in employment, then uh, you, you will not have access to unemployment benefits. And uh, also we can see the numbers of individuals supported by public employment service activities. Next slide, please. Uh, the other uh, type of support, or rather the other uh, major support activity for need youth in Latvia is a national project funded by the European Social Fund which is being implemented by the National Agency for International Programs for Youth. And it also has a, a budget of almost 10 million euros. These are activities specifically to outreach young people aged 15 to 29 years who are not in education, employment, or training. And this project is implemented uh, not just by this uh, centrally located agency, by, but by its project partners in 80% of municipalities all over Latvia. And the municipalities who are engaged in the project have to have a partnership. They are also not implementing these activities by themselves. They work with uh, non-governmental organizations, uh, schools, and uh, various youth clubs. Uh, and this project is also implemented uh, through contacts with public employment service, regional offices, social services. Uh, if young people have difficulties with the law, then there's also cooperation with probation institutions and various policy departments in uh, municipalities and national level. Next slide, please. And the main target groups of this project, uh, you see that there are, of course, the need to youth have uh, various circumstances which have brought them into this situation of not being in education, training, or employment. Uh, one quarter of these young people are teenage mothers and uh, young mothers. We have uh, the other um, largest target population are persons with uh, health issues, disability, and uh, functional impairments. And we also have uh, young people who have a very low level of education. Uh, and other 
target groups which don't have such a high, a high percentage but are still significant are young people with addiction and substance abuse and people who are uh, in economic difficulty, um, many of them in rural areas. Because as I mentioned previously, it's difficult to find uh, quality employment in, in, in the rural territories. Next slide, please. Uh, then we have the uh, role of partners in this project, uh, the Agency for International Programs for Youth as the central hub. Uh, they are the ones who provide their partners with support on how to implement the, uh, the general project strategy. Uh, they are the ones who've uh, helped to train mentors and program managers and uh, they also organize experience exchange for these persons working working in the regions. Of course, uh, all project activities require evaluation and monitoring as well. And the role of the local municipalities and their partners is uh, they coordinate these activities in the regions, and they are the ones who are uh, reaching out to the young people in their territories. They, uh, when they find these young people who have a, uh, a, a neat situation, they are also under finding out what the specific characteristics that have uh, created the, the problem are, and then they accordingly develop individual programs and implement them according to the profiles of the young people. And on the next slide, you see the different types of activities for youth that have been implemented with the support of the project funding. Uh, and among these different activities, you, you of course see uh, consultations of specialists, which include uh, career guidance counselors. Uh, but uh, aside, aside from uh, counseling, there are different development activities uh, seminars, courses, uh, employment, such as voluntary work, and uh, opportunities to explore different professions. Uh, we, I think also the OECD research that Florian the, listed in the chat previously also refers to contact with the work environment with the local companies, so this is another important measure here. And uh, in my last slide, I will introduce you to some of the results of this uh, European Social Fund project. Uh, please remember that uh, Latvia is a country of under 2 million in, uh, inhabitants. And as I showed you earlier, our neat population isn't uh, a major part of the population. Uh, but uh, almost 5,000 individuals in the project period have received support, which has uh, allowed them to enter the labor market, uh, become involved with the public employment service support activities, uh, return to learning, or become socially active through involvement in, uh, involvement in non-governmental organizations or youth sector activities. And I will be happy to take any questions should you have any for me at the moment. Thank you.